In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this table using SketchUp 2022. Let's go. So SketchUp is a great tool to create furniture and it's pretty easy to use as well. And in this video, we'll learn how to create this table step by step using the basic tools in SketchUp. So let's open SketchUp. The most important the first step before you create any project is selecting the right units. So in my case, I'm going to be creating a furniture and it's best to use the woodworking template. So if you don't see the woodworking template here, you can click on more templates. And then at the bottom, you'll find the woodworking millimeters and the woodworking inches. Now, if you're more comfortable using inches, I'm sure most of the students from the States use inches. You can go ahead and use inches. But in my case, I'm going to start with millimeters. I will try and convert the units every now and then so you get an idea of the dimensions I use in this project. So let's select woodworking millimeters. Alright, so this is how our interface looks and I'm using the latest version which is SketchUp Pro 2022. Now a highlight feature which I really liked in this new version is the search tool feature here. So you can click here to search for any tool and you can simply type in what you want to search for. For example, if you search for extrude, then the push pull tool comes. It also searches for tools within your plugins. So if you have additional plugins and there are certain tools, for example, V-Ray lights, you can search for those as well. So it's a super handy feature, which will help you search for tools quickly in case you get lost. So you can either click here or you can press shift S and then search for your tool. So you can search for rectangle and so on. But in our case, we're going to stick with the shortcuts since modeling with SketchUp shortcuts will help you model faster. All right, so now we'll create our table. So let's activate the rectangle tool. So press R to activate the rectangle tool. And then click once and release the key from your mouse. So now we can start creating the rectangle, but it's always best to give the right dimensions. So let's type in the dimensions. In our case, it's going to be 1500 mm. So 1500, 750. And then press enter. So you only click once and you do not click anymore. You just need to type in the value. So 1500, 750. And then press enter. That's how simple it is to create a rectangle. Now 1500 translates to 5 feet. And 750 mm translates to 2 and a half feet. So you can create a rectangle which is 5 feet by 2 and a half feet in depth. Alright, so now we have our base, as you can see. So let's make this a group. So double click to select the faces and edges, right click and click on make group. So this would make it a group. And now let's create our table legs. So our table legs wouldn't sit at the edges, but at an offset from the table edge. So there's two ways you can create that guide. Uh, the first way is by entering the group and then creating an offset. So press F. To create an offset, click once and then you can give an offset around 50 mm. So that would create an offset and then you can start placing your table legs at these points. So this is one way. The other way and my recommended way is by using the tape measure tool. So activate the tape measure tool by pressing T on your keyboard. Then click once on the edge and now you can see that we get this infinite line. So let's place this at around 50 mm from the edge of the line. So type in 50 or 2 inches and press enter. Similarly, from this edge, click and release, type in 50 and press enter. Alright, so now we have our guide points and now we can create our table legs at these edges. So let's activate the rectangle tool again. Let's click here. You can see that it snaps to that intersection. And then let's type in our table leg base dimension, which is going to be 50 mm, comma 50. So that's 2 inches, comma 2 inches. So now let's select this, double click, right click and click on make group. So we have two separate groups now. So let's enter this group now. So to enter the group, you can select the group and press enter. Or you can double click on the group to enter the group as well. Now let's activate the push pull tool. So press P. Click once and release your mouse key. And then give a height of around 730 mm. So the height from the base to the tabletop is generally at around 750 mm. So we can give a 20 mm thick base at the top. All right, now I'll click outside to exit out of the group. 
and now before i copy to these corners i will make this group a component so if i make a change to one of these instances it would affect the others as well so right click and click on make component and call this table leg presenter now let's copy to these edges so select the table leg press m to activate the move tool and tap control on your keyboard to make a copy or option on the mac so now we can click on the corner click and release always click and release in sketchup there's very few tools that we click and drag so let's click and release and then let's place it at this edge awesome so now let's select both of these so i can press and hold this time the control key and then select the second object so we selected both of these objects press m to activate the move tool tap control to switch to the copy mode click at this corner and then place it at this corner all right awesome now what i need to do is make the base sort of smaller than the top so before i do that let me hide this so right click so select the object right click and click on hide so now we can just see our table legs so let's enter this component so double click to enter so now you can see that you can see these instances which means that if you change one it would change these as well for example if i push this out you can see the other ones change but in this case i'll have to scale this down so let's make a drag selection from the left to the right so that would just select the base now press s to activate the scale tool and then you can press control and alt on the windows keyboard and then drag it down so when you drag it it, it generally snaps to the 0.5 scale so you can see in the bottom right it's 0.5 so once it snaps to that scale you can just click to apply so we have a nice conical table leg now i have to unhide that object which i just hid so let's go to edit click on unhide and click on all so that we unhide our geometry now let's select this face and move it on top so select the face press m to activate the move tool click once at the bottom now we're not copying we're simply moving it and to snap it to the top axis you can press the top arrow key just tap the top arrow key do not press and hold and then place it on top of the table leg so now let's check the dimension i'm using the tape measure it's around 730 mm so we can give a base thickness of 20 mm so let's enter this group use the push pull tool and give a thickness so click once click and release and type in a value of 20 mm so type in 20 and press enter all right awesome now generally tables will have a beveled edge at the corners here so let's do that so again let's create some guides so use the tape measure tool and give an offset of around 50 mm from the edge all right and let's draw our arc from this corner to this corner so let's select the arc tool here click once at that edge and then click on the second edge and now if you sort of hover over this side you can see that snaps to the tangent as soon as you see the pink line you can click the third time so now it separates out the faces now if you want to delete this part we can use the push pull tool so activate the push pull tool but uh, you can notice that now it wouldn't actually push this face because this face is selected so select the right face first and then activate the push pull tool and then click once and bring it down and you can see that offset limited to minus 20 mm so just click on the edge and that would get rid of that let's do it here as well so let's click on the arc tool click once click and release the second time and click and release the third time now let's select the face use the push pull tool click once and release the key from your mouse and then you can also orbit to the bottom some students have asked me how do you orbit while pushing it's simple you just need to click and release on the face and then you can orbit however you like and then at the bottom you can click on this face delete that edge so let's do the same for these edges as well all right awesome now i'll create a uh, opening in the center for my wires and so on so let's again create a guide from this edge and let's snap it to the midpoint here so you just need to click and release and then you can sort of snap it to any edge that you like so in our case it has to snap to the midpoint here and similarly from this edge the midpoint here 
Now let's activate the circle tool. So press C to activate the circle tool. Click in the center there. Now a lot of students make a mistake. Now you can see that I'm inside this group, but let's press escape to exit the groups. So now if I press the circle tool and click at the center, and then if I draw my circle at a radius of around 30 mm, you can see that I've drawn my circle. But most students face this problem that when they try to create the opening, it wouldn't really create an opening, but rather it would create a simple solid group. This happens because you are not creating the circle inside the group. So it's very important that you create your circle inside the group. So let me press Ctrl Z to undo. So you can see that I'm outside the group. How do I know whether I'm outside the group? It's because of this blue line. Once I enter the group by double clicking or pressing enter, you can see this dashed boundary dotted line. That's how I know I'm inside the group. And also make sure that when you select the face, you can see this highlight on the face as well. So now if I make a circle, so let's create a circle and give a radius of around 30 mm. So press 30 and press enter. Now it divides the face. And now if I activate the push pull tool, click once and release. And then either you can orbit to the bottom and then click again to create that opening. So that's how you create an opening. Always enter the group and then create the opening. Now there's a lot of guides, so I do not want to see these guides. To clear all of them in a simple way is simply by going to edit and clicking on delete guides. So that would get rid of all the guides. And finally, let me just group all of these together. So make a drag selection from left to right, right click and click on make group. So you can see that all of these groups come together here in the outliner window. If you do not see the outliner window, you can go to windows, default tray and switch on outliner. And what I generally do is rename the outliner as well. So let's call this table. Click once and then click again to rename and let's call this table top. All right, awesome. So we've created our cool looking table. And if you want to play something on top of this table, you can do that as well. Feel free to be creative. Let's go to Windows, 3D Warehouse, search for statue. And let's probably bring this in. So click on download, click on yes. Sometimes the placement point is different. You just need to click once to place it somewhere. And then click on the corner and place it here. And then you can use the rotate tool to rotate it by 180 as well. So we've placed our cool looking model. I guess this is Caligula. Not really sure what this is. So I hope you found this video useful. In the next video, we're going to start with our project. If you are very new to SketchUp, I would recommend that you start with project number three, which works with SketchUp 2020 and V-Ray next. But if you are feeling confident, go ahead with project number one, where I work with SketchUp 2021 and V-Ray 5 for SketchUp. There's a lot of cool stuff in project one. Do follow it step by step. In case you get stuck anywhere, reach out to me in the Q&A section. And if you like this course so far, feel free to leave a review. It keeps me motivated in releasing more content, more quizzes, assignments, and a whole lot more. I'll see you guys next video. Cheers.